Welcome back. In the previous video I did a breakdown of the FPC connector of the mini Joy-Con board. I analyzed the audio circuit and explained how the backlight circuit works for the LCD display. Today I will continue the final part about the Nintendo Switch Lite mainboard. In this video I will explain how the touchscreen works and where it's located. I will explain what the important pins are for the eMMC flash memory, how the LCD driver circuit works. I will break down the Wi-Fi circuit and lastly I will break down the most important pins for the RAM modules. If you like my content and you would like to see more of these types of videos, please subscribe to help this channel grow. So let's start. The touch control IC is located in this region. This is the touch controller FPC connector. This is the touch screen controller. It's connected to this FPC connector and this is the LCD screen. This ribbon cable connects into this FPC connector and all data lines will go to this controller IC. These two pads are the data lines, so these data lines will go to the APU. I think this is an I2C protocol. Underneath this IC there is a pad that's called Enable 1. It's an interrupt line and this one will go directly to the primary power management IC. When you touch on the touchscreen and the console is in sleep mode, it can send an interrupt signal back to the APU to turn the console on. This uh, touchscreen controller is responsible for processing the, the touch inputs and translating them into actions or commands that the console can understand. When you touch the screen, your fingers disrupt the screen's electrostatic field. So the controller determines the precise location of the touch on the screen. This is done by analyzing the signals received from the touch points and using a algorithm to calculate the exact coordinates of the touch. When the controller calculated the coordinates, it will send these coordinates back to the APU. And this is done by the I2C interface. The APU will receive the touch coordinates from this controller and it will perform the necessary action based on the location and type of touch. The eMMC flash storage is located in this region near the APU. The eMMC is a flash storage, so the eMMC serves as a primary storage medium for the Nintendo Switch. It consists of a NAND flash memory integrated with a flash memory controller and firmware. So the firmware is located on this chip. The Switch can store different types of data on the eMMC, including game files, system updates, user profiles and downloaded content. The APU interacts with the eMMC controller to perform read and write operations. When a game is launched or an application is accessed, the relevant data is read from the eMMC into the RAM for execution. Also, when saving progress in a game or downloading new content, the data is written back from the console's RAM memory back to the eMMC. The physical size is bigger than the actual size for the pads. The eMMC is a big IC but really it needs only a few pads to communicate with the APU. The eMMC is a big chip, but this IC has only a few pads for communicating with the APU. Most of the pads are not used, only the pads with a name are used. In this block diagram you can see the eMMC flash memory. This is the MMC controller, also the memory controller. And this is the memory flash storage. The MMC controller can write or read the data that's stored on the flash storage. So if it wants to read, it will send a read action on the control signal and the memory will serve this data back on the data bus back to the controller and the controller will send this data on the data lines back to the APU. So the data lines 0 till 7 is used for bidirectional data between the eMMC and the APU. This command line is also a bidirectional signal between the eMMC and APU. So the command can be I want to read or write. This is the clock signal. This is used for timing the data. This memory control has an internal yeah, voltage regulator. So that is the VDDI. So it will regulate its own uh, internal voltage regulator. The VDDF is a supply voltage for the flash memory. It's 3.3 volts. And this voltage comes from the primary power management IC. Next we have VDD. And VDD is a supply voltage for the memory controller. And this also comes from the primary power management IC. This reset signal comes from the APU, also the data strobe, I don't know exactly what that is, but it will go to the APU. On this pad, the clock signal is received from the APU, and you can measure it on this pad. 
This command pad is also a bi-directional signal that is used for device initialization and uh, command transfers between the APU and the eMMC. This signal can be measured on this pad. The power for the internal voltage regulator for the memory controller is located here. All the red arrows are the VDD power rail. So this is the supply voltage for the memory controller. And it can be measured on this capacitor and on this test point. And this test point is located at the primary power management IC. So the power comes from this power management IC and it will go into the flash memory on all those pads. The same goes for the blue arrows. And the blue arrow stands for the VDDF power rail. So this is the supply voltage for the flash memory part. That's 3.3 volts. And that can be located on this capacitor. And this power also comes from the main power management IC. Then we have the reset signal. So this reset signal comes from the APU. It will go to this pad and from here it will go to the APU. The data channel 0 till 7 is a bidirectional channel. So the data can be sent between the APU and the eMMC storage. Data lines are located in this section. When the APU wants to read data, it will send a read command to the eMMC. The eMMC will access that data in the memory flash part. The memory flash part will read the data back to the memory controller. And from the memory controller on these data lines, it will send back to the APU. And if the APU wants to store data, the data goes on this data lines to the memory controller. And from there, it will be stored in the memory flash storage. On these pads, the data line 0 till 7 are located. So you can measure them with a oscilloscope. This is the LCD drive that is used in all the Nintendo switches. This is the part number. This LCD driver chip is a step up and inverted two channel switching regulator. So this is channel one, channel two. It will create a positive and a negative voltage for the LCD display. And the LCD needs this voltage to create an image. The liquid crystals used in the LCD display acts as a light modulator. They change the alignment based on the applied voltage controlling the passage of light through this display. By applying the appropriate voltage with the correct polarity, the liquid crystals can be manipulated to create the desired display effect, such as showing the image, text or graphics. This LCD driver generates the positive voltage and the negative voltage. The power supply for this chip comes from the VSYS, is 4.2 volts. Next we have the enable signal for the channel 1 and channel 2. This comes from the APU. When the voltage is present and the enable signals are present, it will generate this voltage. So this is the physical layout of the chip. And these are the pads. So we are only interested in the VDD, the power input voltage pin, the positive boost channel, LX1, and the inverted channel on LX2 pin. Also the enable signal on STB1 pin and the STB2 pins has to be present. The LCD driver is located near the game card controller. So in this region, the LCD drive circuit is located. This will send the positive and the negative power supply to this LCD connector. The positive power can be found on this inductor and the negative power can be found on this inductor here. On this capacitor, the voltage in can be measured of 4.2 volts. The feedback pin for channel 1 and the feedback pin for channel 2 are located here and here. On this capacitor, there is some kind of reference voltage for the inverted channel. On this capacitor, the discharge switch of the inverted channel can be found. The display data comes from the APU. These are the data lines. These data lines will go to this display connector. From here, it will go to the LCD display to display a image, text or any graphic. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity is located here. These are the antennas. The Wi-Fi IC BCM435 is used in the Nintendo Switch Lite, the version 1, version 2 and the OLED version. This Wi-Fi chip is a wireless communication chip that provides Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity along with features like a dual band support. So this is one band and this is the second band. The chip supports 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz frequency bands for the Wi-Fi connectivity. And this is needed for providing the compatibility with a wide range of Wi-Fi networks and uh, offering better performance in environments where there is a lot of interference. These are the TR switches. 
the TR switch, also known as a radio frequency switch or an antenna switch, is used to direct the flow of the radio frequency signals between the transmitter and the receiver. During transmission, it connects the transmitter to the antenna, allowing the radio frequency signals generated by the transmitter to be transmitted out to the communication medium, such as the air. During reception, it connects the antenna to the receiver, allowing the radio frequency signals received by the antenna to be directed to the receiver for processing. These two parts are the diplexer, and a diplexer is used to combine or separate signals at different frequency. It allows the transmission and reception of signals over one antenna. In many Wi-Fi systems, separate frequency bands are used for transmission and reception. The diplexer separates these incoming and outgoing signals based on their frequencies. This is the internal diagram of this chip. So as you can see, here's the diplexer. These two are the antennas. The signal goes into one of those antennas. It will separate that signal. It will go into the switch control. And from here, it will receive or send the data back to the antenna. This is how the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth circuit looks like. So this is the Wi-Fi chip. The Wi-Fi has an internal box switching regulator, so the output can be measured here. The VSYS of 4.2 volt can be measured here. Here is an output of 3.3 volt. The VDD core voltage of 1 volt can be measured here. The crystal input is located here. And this is the crystal output. Here you can see the four TR switches. And the control signal for this switch goes into this chip. It can be located here. 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 And on this gap. On this pad you can measure the 5 GHz signal for the channel 1. And on this pad you can measure the 5 GHz signal for the channel 0. These two components are the diplexers. On this component you can measure 2.4 GHz signal for channel 1. On this location you can measure the 2.4 GHz signal for channel 0. On this pad you can measure the 5 GHz signal that goes into this chip. So this is the input side. On this pad here you can measure 2.4 GHz signal that goes into this chip. This is also the input side. This is the Bluetooth output. On these capacitors here you can measure the PCIe uh, differential pair signals for receiver part and the transmitting part. Also the clock signal of 100 MHz can be measured on this. And all these signals will go to the APU. On this pad the signal is used by the APU to power up this Wi-Fi section. So when this pin is high the regulators on this chip are enabled and the Wi-Fi is out of the reset and it will start. On this pad, the APU is used to power up or power down the internal voltage regulators in this chip. And these voltage regulators are used by the Bluetooth and FM section of this chip. Also, this frequency is 37.4 MHz. The 5 GHz Wi-Fi for channel 1, the receiving side, goes on this pad. This is the random access memory. The green pads are ground. The gray pads are data lines. All the data lines go straight to the APU. And the pads in red are the power supplies. DDR4 memory operates at the range of voltages, with the most common being the 1.1 volt for the core voltage, the VDD, and 1.1 volt for the input-output voltage, also known as VDDQ. So this is VDDQ. This one is for the input output voltage. The core voltage VDD is the primary power supply used to power the internal circuitry of the memory module. The input output voltages is used to drive the input and output signals between the DDR4 RAM module and the memory controller. So this includes transferring the data, the read and write, control signals and address information. VDD1 is 1.8 volt. It comes from the primary power management IC. The V1 power rail. Power rail is generated here and it will go to the VD1 core voltage. The secondary power management IC also generates 0.8 volt and this 0.8 volt goes to the VDDQ. VDD2 is 1.1 volt. It comes from the first power management IC, the V4 power rail. So it's generated here, it will go to the VDD2. VDD2 core voltage can be measured at this capacitor. 
and the core voltage one can be measured at this capacitor and the input output voltage the vddq can be measured at these capacitors so at every ram module on the right side you can find these capacitors and eventually each capacitor is some kind of power rail so in this case vdd2 vdd1 and vddq vdd2 the core voltage can be measured on the back side on the back side of the ram modules you can find these capacitors each section consists of uh, capacitors and on these capacitors you can measure the 1.1 volt it comes from the primary power management ic the v4 power rail and it goes to the back and from here it will go to vdd2 the core voltage of this ram module this was the final part of Nintendo Switch Lite analysis. I will make a separate video with all the diode measurements of the test points and important ICs and connectors. If you like this video and you want to see more, then don't forget to give a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more in-depth circuit analysis. Thank you for watching. Until next time, bye bye.